Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to talk about something called density. So in particular the density of the rational numbers and the reals. And this topic goes back to something which we talked about when we finished off the consequences of the um, axiom of completeness uh, where we pointed out using the Archimedean property that we could find a reciprocal of a natural number. So something of the form 1 over n uh, between zero and some given real number. That is, you take some even really, really tiny number x, positive, you can find some number in between zero and x of the form one over n. Uh, so we're gonna generalize that result to saying even just if you have any two real numbers, we're gonna be able to find some rational number in between those two real numbers. So that'll be the goal. Uh, to get there, we're, we're going to start off with uh, another axiom. So this is called the well-ordering axiom. All right, or I'll sometimes abbreviate it WOA. Um, in particular, I like to abbreviate this one uh, WOA greater than or equal to M. Okay, so and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to let M be some real number. And I want to consider the set of integers that are greater than m. All right. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. And I'm actually going to be looking at non-empty subsets of that set. So every non-empty subset, oops, subset of the integers greater than this fixed integer m has a minimal element, okay, a smallest element if you like. Okay, so in other words, if I have some subset A, which is not the empty set, so I have some subset A, all of whose elements are bigger than M, then there exists some element, let's call it little l, in A, such that if I take any other element, say little a in big A, then little l is no bigger than A. Okay, so it is a smallest element in the set. Okay, and we take this as an axiom. Okay, whenever we have a non empty subset, all right, that is all the elements are bigger than some fixed real number then there will be some smallest element in that set. Okay, uh, This is certainly something not true if I replace the integers with the real numbers. Okay, This is very specific to the integers. OK, so now given this, uh, we're going to write down a little lemma that will get us to the theorem we're looking uh, for. And so uh, the name of this lemma, I'm going to say real numbers more than one apart have an integer in between. Okay, so that's that's what we want to remember. All right, so if you have real numbers that are more than one apart from each other, there will be some integer in between. Okay, so written out precisely, uh, if I have two real numbers, and let's say x is less than y, Okay, so y will be the bigger one, such that, well, I want them to be more than one apart. So if I take their difference, that should be greater than one. Then there exists some integer, little l, such that l lies strictly between x and y. Okay, so I can put integers in between real numbers that are far enough apart. Okay, so let's try to prove this. Uh, so I want to define first a set, right? Why? Well, I'm going to use somehow the well-ordering axiom in here. So I need a, a non-empty subset of, of something. We'll see what. Uh, so let's let, I don't know, we'll call it capital X, be the set of all integers that are smaller, or rather that are bigger than this little x, right? So we have this little x in the statement of the problem. And I want to choose all the integers that are bigger than this x. Okay. Now, 
by the Archimedean property, we know that for any real number, there is an integer bigger than it, right? So this set X is not empty. So by the Archimedean property, X does not equal the empty set. Okay, there is some integer bigger than X. Okay? And we need that if we want to use the well-ordering axiom, because of this assumption, we're only looking at non-empty subsets. Okay, fine. Um, because every element in big X is greater than little x, then we know that X is a subset of the set of integers greater than X. Okay, cool. So that actually helps us get back to the well-ordering axiom. We needed a non-empty subset. We have that, but of, well, Z greater than something, right? We needed some sort of a lower bound. And there we go. Little x is our lower bound. Okay, fine. So we now have the two things we need in order to use the well-ordering axiom. Okay. So the well-ordering axiom implies that capital X has some minimal element. So it has a minimal element, and let's just call it little l. Okay. Now, if this is the smallest element, the minimal element in X, if I subtract one from it, then I will get a new number which is no longer in X. Thus, L minus 1 is not an element of X. And so, L minus 1, well, because it's not in X, right, but it is an integer, then I know that it cannot be greater than X. So L minus 1 must be less than or equal to X. Right? If it was greater than X, it would be in the set X, which it's not. Okay? Also, though, because little l is an element of big X, little l must be greater than X. So I know that X lies strictly between L minus 1 and X. Well, strictly at least on the top side, not on the bottom side. Okay? If I add 1 to everything... So adding 1 now yields, well, let's see, if I add 1 to the first bit, I get L minus 1 plus 1 is L. Uh, the X becomes X plus 1, and of course this was less than or equal. Uh, and then, uh, well, I could add the, the L plus 1 over here, but I, I'm not going to. Um, in fact, I want to look on the other side. Well, I already know that this little L is greater than X, so I can just copy that here. And what about x plus 1? So I claim that x plus 1 is going to be less than y. Why? <laughs> well, what did we know about x and y? We know that y minus x is greater than 1, right? They're more than 1 apart. If I add x to both sides, right, this is equivalent to saying y is greater than x plus 1. Ah, so that's just what I'm saying down here. But now look what I have. I have x and y on the ends. And I have this number L, which you just kind of cover up this in your mind. I have X less than L less than Y. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove. Okay, so we've completed the proof here that there is always an integer between any two real numbers that are more than one apart. Okay, so that's a lemma though, which means we want to prove it, or we want to use it to prove something. And what is it we want to prove? Well, this is our our really big theorem. And the theorem is that the rational numbers, the set of rational numbers, is dense in the real numbers. All right, well, what do I mean by that? So if I take any two real numbers, and let's assume one of them is bigger than the other, so I take A less than B, real numbers, then there exists a rational number, let's call it x, such that x is between a and b. Okay, so really in between these two numbers. Okay, and that is the density, right? So you can always find rational numbers between any two real numbers. Okay, so how do we prove this? 
Well, because A is less than B, all right, so I have A and I have B, I know that the difference between them, B minus A, is positive. Okay, so I have some positive real number. And we already know that positive real numbers are bounded away from zero. So we know that there exists some natural number, some positive integer n, such that 1 over n is strictly less than the positive real number b minus a. OK, let's uh, multiply through by n. OK, so if we multiply through by n, we get that 1 is less than n times b minus n times a. OK, but now I have two real numbers, n times b and n times a, and they are more than one apart. Right? That's what this tells you. Right? Their difference is greater than 1. And so by the previous lemma, we know I can fit some sort of integer right, in between them. Right? We can find some L that lies between NA and NB. So by the previous lemma, there exists some integer, call it L, such that NA is less than L is less than N times B. OK, well, now let's undo this multiplication by N, right? We'll divide by N. So when I do that, I get A. Now, mind you, of course, N is a positive integer, so we're not worried about changing signs here. A is less than L over N, which is less than B. Now, L and N are both integers, right? N was an integer and L was an integer. N is not zero, right? It's a positive number. So that tells you that L over N is a rational number. Hey, so as L and N are integers and N does not equal zero, we have L over N is a rational number. And that's what we wanted to find, right? That's our x, ultimately, right? We wanted to find some number that was greater than a and less than b, and which was a rational number. And that's what we've done. OK, so that completes the, the proof of the density theorem for the rationals and the reals. Now, you might say, well, there's also some other numbers in the reals that we call the irrationals. Are they dense? And the answer is yes. All right, so let's write this down as a theorem, but I'm going to leave the proof to you. So the set of irrationals is dense in the real numbers. Okay, so as a precise statement, if A is less than B, our real numbers, then there exists some number, let's call it y this time, and we'll use the shorthand notation for irrationals. We take the set of all reals, and we get rid of the set of all rationals. Right? That's all an irrational is. It's a real number that's not rational. So there exists such a y such that a is less than y is less than b. So between any two reals, we can find some rational in the middle, we can also find some irrational in the middle. All right? And when I say middle, I don't mean like the average, I just mean somewhere in between. Okay? So both the rationals and the irrationals are dense in the real numbers. All right, we will see you all next time.